It's a day I'll never forget. I was standing atop the pilot house of the research vessel Odyssey of the south coast of Sri Lanka, scanning the ocean for evidence of life. And that's when I saw it. A spectacular vertical single column blow over eight meters tall, unarguably a blue whale. That's also when I saw five more. Six blue whales in a squ four square kilometer area. Knowing that this species normally travels alone or in pairs, I was absolutely blown away by this sighting. See, blue whales feed on tiny shrimp-like creatures called krill, which are not much bigger than a quarter. So to fulfill their great energetic demands, it makes sense that they seek out areas of the globe with like easily accessible and large patches of krill. So, in the summer months, blue whales, hungry blue whales particularly, travel to the polar oceans where they feed. And as winter arrives, they take these lengthy migrations to the tropics to breed and give birth. This is what scientists thought all blue whales did. But this sighting defied everything we thought we knew. Not only were we seeing a gathering typical of colder waters, but the big red patch of whale poo was solid evidence that these animals were also feeding in tropical waters. That day in 2003, I began my romance with the most enigmatic and least known population of blue whales on Earth, the Northern Indian Ocean blue whale. And I soon realized I had found my lifelong quest. Forward to 2012, I'm trying to figure out uh, the first big question that intrigues me. Why is it that this specific population of blue whales chooses not to migrate? Does it mean that our tropical waters have sufficient food to support them year-round? I'm not quite sure yet, but I am beginning to find clues. You see, these blue whales lift their tails out of the water before a deep dive more often than any other population in the world. So it seems that in tropical waters, their food is much deeper down. And to access these depths, it makes sh this behavior enables to streamline themselves to reach these depths with minimal energy expenditure. This is where it all began at the age of six. And I've always known it was going to be a long journey. You know, I'm, I'm really, really honored to be a, a part of a nation that has never had a history of whaling. But, of course, the whales in our waters face other threats. The south coast of Sri Lanka is one of the busiest shipping routes in the world, and it's only getting busier, and it's the worst possible place to be a whale. But sadly, this is where we see them feeding and moving around. A growing tourism and an unregulated whale watching industry that specifically targets this species increase the pressure on the population. While I, it's been a great honor for me to be part of this research, and I mean, they are the largest animals that have ever lived on the planet. You know, they're four times as big as this stage. We are in the 21st century. We don't even know if what we're seeing is an adaptation to their environments or a completely separate subspecies. Are we going to wipe them out before we've had even the slightest chance to solve this mystery? Definitely not if I have anything to do with it. Thank you.